All right. So anyway, the, my drummer came to me and said, sing this scripture. And then the scripture was Proverbs 3. And, said, and I just looked at it, and then I started going. Said we will write them on the day. Yeah. Ooh, I see y'all be on Instagram, huh? Y'all be <laughs> Said we really ought to write. Okay, let us sing the song, all right? Come on, let's go for it. Do I gotta, we gotta find some energy. Come on. I write them all forever be fruitful indeed I am the way the truth and the light no one gets to the fire except that he comes through me yeah. so let not mercy and truth say forsake you super excited about this time uh, that we have together today uh, you know we, we did a three-part series uh, entitled let's go fishing that's right let's go fishing and one of those lessons we talked about was I'm tired of this church uh, I think the next lesson was uh, where is Simon and then last week we did a message entitled go get Simon uh, well, I just felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to not just end it there uh, but we wanted to uh, continue that. I mean, this message, I really believe, is the culmination of this series. Although it started off as a three part, I believe today is going to be the culmination. And God gave us a message entitled, Don't Do Me Like That. Uh, grab your teens, your young people. I believe this word is going to be life changing for them. It also is going to help us uh, to understand them a little bit better. But we're getting ready to get into the word and I'm super excited. Someone's coming to pray and lead us even further as they go into worship. Don't forget, text somebody, tag somebody, tell them to tune in right now uh, to the kingdom experience as we prepare to dig into this word. And the message is entitled, don't do me like that. You're going to be blessed. I'll be back in just a moment. Let's prepare to be. Left to be in the house of the Lord one more time. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. We're here, y'all. Some people didn't make it this far. But we're here, y'all. Some people didn't make it out the hospital. <laughs> Went in and didn't come out. But we're here. And since we're here, 
we ought to give God some praise. Because every praise is to our God.
today. I'm super excited uh, about this opportunity to share this word. Text somebody, tag somebody, tell them to tune in right now to the kingdom experience. Come on. Uh, this, this is an additional part. That's right. You get a little something extra uh, on today. Turn with us to Mark chapter 10. Verse number 46 through 49, Mark chapter 10, verse 46 through 49. I'm super excited about this opportunity. Thank you uh, to those that are here, to those in the cyber sanctuary. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 through 49. Listen at what it says, and I'm going to read uh, these verses. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and the disciples together. With a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many people rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted out the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped. And said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. I want to stop right there, but I want you to keep your Bible, keep your tablet, your phone open, because we're going to look at the next three verses down to verse 52. And uh, I really believe you're going to be blessed. I want to talk for a few moments with this thought in our mind, and it'll be on the screen for you. Don't do me like that. Come on. I need you to type it in the comments. Don't do me like that. I want to start off by quoting the words of Mr. Marvin Gaye, and that is what's going on. Things ain't what they used to be. Uh, what do you mean, Pastor? What's going on? Our young people are killing each other by the thousands. And right here in our city, our state and in our country, the killings, not just killings, black on black crime, even suicide rate is at an all time high. It's increased and constantly being on the rise. Prisons are overcrowded and they're building more prisons to house young people. But they're not building enough colleges and universities to educate our youth to keep them from going into committing crimes and all types of living. What's going on? Uh, things ain't what they used to be. What, what do you mean, Pastor? I don't know how old you are, and I'm not that old, but I can remember years ago, I grew up, we grew up, some of us, watching the Flintstones. <laughs> now they're watching the real husbands of Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. We, we, when we grew up, we grew up watching Alf. Anybody remember Alf? Come on, don't tell your age, but you remember Alf? I remember watching Alf. Now they're watching the Atlanta Housewives. Yeah, we grew up watching Knight Rider. Anybody remember Knight Rider and Kit? But nowadays they're watching Pimp My Ride. What are you saying, Pastor Ren? See, see, back in the day, the drug lords, the drug boys, they killed over money. It was property, territory. Uh, but nowadays, people are killing for the sport of it because it's fun. And you don't even have to be the target to be a target. So, so in the words of Marvin Gaye, my question to us is what's going on? Uh, th things ain't what they used to be. We are in a state of emergency in our city, in our state. And in our country, things have gotten out of control. And I believe this with all of my heart that the answer to the world today is still in the church. God has the answer. And when the church of the living God comes together, we can see things happen, not just globally, but locally. Can, can, can I give us a kingdom nugget? I pray you can get this. It'll be on the screen for you. And that is, although the message is still the same, our methods must change. Can I say that again? Although the method is still the same, the message is still the same. 
our message must change. We we cannot do what we did in the 60s and 70s and think that it's OK today. Yeah, yeah. You may have been in a horse and buggy type of environment years ago, but now they're talking about sending people to the moon. Uh, we, we're talking about advancing in technology. So things have to change so that we can stay relevant with this generation. I, I, I know I don't know who how many is watching, but uh, there, there's an old song that I used to hear one of my friends pastors sing. And it's, it's a Baptist song, but I think it's universally adopted. And that is to serve this present age our calling to fulfill there is something about making sure that we are reaching people today where they are come on look at the text his name is Bartimaeus bar son of a filthy man and he's hanging out the bible says in Jericho Jericho is a cursed place he's blind blind Bartimaeus he, he he's not from a well-to-do family but his father listen to this y'all his father was no good Mm. His father was no good, meaning he had no help. He had no mentor. And on top of not having a good father, not having help, not having a mentor, the Bible says he's blind. What, what do you mean? He's blind, which means he can't see. He can't see that he's hanging out with the wrong crowd. I want to talk to somebody. Your, 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 your sons, your daughters, your, your, your grandkids, my kids, sometimes they can't see that they're hanging out with the wrong crowd. They can't see that the wrong people are influencing them. They can't see that they're living beneath their potential because they are spiritually, in his case, he was naturally blind. And as a result of being blind, having low self-esteem, no family values and and hanging out uh, on the corner, hustling with the dope boys all day. He's now relegated himself to accepting what people give him. Now, I want you to get this cyber sanctuary. A beggar deals with people that fill his cup. Uh, when you're a beggar, you, you, you're at the mercy of people that pass by, that put something in your cup. They, they fill your cup, but they don't change your condition. Okay, can I talk to somebody that says, Pastor, I'm tired of dealing with cup fillers. I want to find some, some, some condition changers. Yeah, I don't want nobody to just tickle my fancy. I want somebody that's going to speak life into me. They, in essence, they are paying him to stay blind. Yeah, yeah. As long as you keep coming here in this condition, we'll give you a little something, something to stay there. But is it anybody in the cyber sanctuary that can believe with me that I'm tired of people paying me to stay where I am? I'm believing God that this time next year I'll be out of debt. I'm believing God this time next year I'll be booed up like everybody else. I'm believing God this time next year my business will take off. Come on, somebody type it in the comments. You're not going to pay me to stay down beneath my privilege. Uh, people make him feel good or bad based off of what they give him. So if he had a good day, they gave him good money. But if he felt bad, it was because they did not give him what he thought he needed. And look at verse number 47. It says, and when he heard, when he heard, remember now he's blind. Come on, somebody remember this. He's blind. But the text says when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth. He said to himself, can I talk to Russ? Here it is. Principle number one, write it down. Use what you have to get what you want. Come on, I need you to get this cyber sanctuary. You have to use what you have in order to get what you want. What, what do you mean, Pastor Ian? I know things are not like you want them. I know that uh, you, you don't have all the sufficiencies you think that you need to make it. But there is something that you have that has value that can get you what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say what you want to say about the young lady that jumped up on the pole. And I'm not condoning that. But might I suggest to you, she understood I can use what's been given to me although the wrong way I can get what I want oh God I know y'all wasn't gonna like that but sometimes you have to use listen cyber sanctuary pastor is not telling anybody to climb up on a pole no 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 what, what I'm telling you is sometimes you have to be in a position to where you're willing to use what you have so that you can get the things that you want don't complain about what you don't have use what you have to make life 
better where you are. He he said, my eyes are gone, but there's nothing wrong with my ears. I'm going to let my ears do for me what my eyes can't do so that I can receive the healing that I need. Uh, th- th- this might be my last opportunity. This might not. Uh, this this may be my last time to get healing. So I'm going to use what I have. Can I say this? We behave based off of what we believe. And oftentimes we cannot hear the cries of young people for telling them to shut up. Look, look at the text. The text says as he's crying out to Jesus, the crowd is telling him, shut up. Uh, be quiet. And sometimes if we're not sensitive enough, we don't we will miss the cries of this generation for telling them to be quiet. Can I talk to us? Getting pregnant before you get married sometimes is a cry saying help. Yeah, yeah, joining a gang but, but, but without having somebody to speak life into me sometimes is a cry of help. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're jumping out of one bed to the next bed is a, is a cry for help. And sometimes we don't hear their cries because we're constantly telling them to shut up. Uh, in verse number 48, it says many people rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Now, my question to us is why would everybody that can see? Tell a brother that can't see to be quiet. Did y'all get that? Why would somebody that can see tell somebody that can't see to be quiet? Can I give us principle number two? I need you to write this down. Come on, I need you to write it down. My brother gave me this some time ago. Uh, uh, I shout out to him, Jason Meadows. Man, I saw that word he posted on social media and it got me to thinking. Y'all write it down. When I can't empathize with people, I will criticize people. Whenever we don't empathize, we criticize. The definition of empathize is the understanding of what another person is feeling from their perspective or by putting yourself in their shoes. God help me talk in here. Did you hear that? Let me say it again for you. The understanding what another person is feeling from their perspective. Or by putting yourself in their shoes. Oh, my God. See, it's hard to understand the actions of a blind man if you've never been blind. It's hard to understand the actions of a young lady uh that's been told you've got to you've got to use your body in order to prove to me how much you love me. If you've never been in a situation like that, it's hard to understand the actions of a young man that's been told the only way to be a man is you've got to jump in and out of the wrong bed. It's hard to understand the action of a young man that's about to see his mother get put out the house. So he hits the corner to sell drugs so that he can keep the lights on in the house if you've never been in a situation like that but can I say something even if you've never been there we can at least empathize with them so that we don't criticize them am I talking to anybody have you ever said to yourself before can we just be real for a moment I don't know why in the world she got a divorce she got a good man why did he leave her why did he cheat on her why did he walk away from her he's got a good woman until you got a divorce yeah, 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 yeah. I, I feel you. Somebody saying, Pastor, I'm on my third one. I'm on my fourth one. Yeah. Until you got one, then you're able to empathize with those that go through because you understand sometimes things happen that you can't control. Can I talk to us? You may be looking down your nose at somebody else's child that's going through, but you ought to show empathy because it could very well be your son. It could very well be your daughter. Are y'all listening to me today? Sometimes we have to make sure that we put ourselves or put our feet in their shoes so we can understand them. Ah, Come on, come on. I got to keep it moving. Keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Here it is. Verse 48 says, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. They, they, They told him to be quiet. But he shouted out the more, Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Can I say this? We must give them options in order to get them to stop doing what they've been doing. Ah. See, 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 what I found out is resistance can lead to rebellion. Ooh, God. See, when you tell a young person nowadays what they can't do, they're going to spend all of their time trying to prove to you what they will do. 
Did you hear what I said in the cyber sanctuary? When you tell them what they can't become, they'll spend years trying to prove to you what they will become. So we have to give them options. You are selling drugs. You're buying low, selling high. You need to be in business. I'm talking about a legitimate business. You, you, you've, you got to tell them, young lady, you're using it. Yeah, you're twerking it. I see you using it, but maybe you need to start a dance school. Ooh, God help me talk in here. See, 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 sometimes we've got to give them some options so that they know what to do, how to do it, and they can do it the right way. Come on, somebody type it. They give them some options. Give them some options. Don't you wish people would have given you options back in the day instead of telling you what you can't become, what you can't drive? where you can't live give me some options and I'm not gonna settle for the only option is the ghetto the devil is a lie when God has told me I could have everything on the other side of the mountain you have to give them some options 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 and look at what the text says Jesus heard him and look at what happened in verse number 51 and Jesus told them in verse 49 call him Oh, God, G Jesus says, I need you to go get him. Go, 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 go get him. Go get him. Go get him. Now, listen at this. Jesus, think about this. He tells them to go and get him. Go, go, go get him. Go get him. The same people that told him not to or told him to be quiet. Jesus tells the same people, go get him. Ah, look, look, look at what he does. Look at what he does. In verse number 51, I need you to get this. I'm coming back to that. Look at verse 51. Jesus says, what do you want? And the blind man says, I want to see. He says, give me my vision. Okay, let, let me give you principle number three. Come on, write it down. Principle number three. Here it is. An open mouth opens options. Jesus says, what do you want? He says, give me my vision. Now, notice he didn't say give me tangible things, but give me my vision. Here is why. If you give me my vision, I can go and get my own stuff. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in the cyber sanctuary. What we need to be praying is God open the eyes of my understanding so that I can go get the very thing you said was mine. You don't have to give me a car. Just give me my sight back so that I can see you want me to drive the best. I'll go get my own car. Did y'all hear me? You don't have to give me a house, God. Give me my vision back so I can fix my own credit. I can go get my own house. If God gives me vision, I can get everything that he said was mine. Jesus could understand this brother because he'd been in the same situation. Oh, I knew I was going to leave lose somebody right there. But might I suggest to you, Jesus had stepbrothers. His biological father or natural father, not biological, but natural father really wasn't his daddy. So he grew up in the house where he had stepbrothers. He, he probably grew up in the house where people talked about his mother. Your mother got pregnant as a teenager. He, he grew up in a house where people really didn't treat him the same way. Come on, talk to me, somebody, so he could understand and empathize with this young man that grew up without a father figure or somebody to speak life into him because he had to endure some of the same things. Can I tell us this? But when you meet a man named Jesus, you've got to open your mouth, make yourself vulnerable, and say, God, an open mouth will always open options. Ah, God, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You've got to understand me in order to help me. That's what our young people are saying. Come on, I need you to type it there. We must understand them in order to help them. Ah, ah think, think about this. This is not the first time that he called Jesus. The first time he says, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus kept walking. But the second time he yells it out even louder out of desperation and determination. And it was his faith that caused Jesus to stop. Jesus says to the crowd, his church, the disciples, y'all go get him. Okay, let me let me talk to you. He does not tell the school system, you go get him. He doesn't tell the government agencies, you go get him. He does not tell the neighborhood watch, you go get him. He does not tell the big brother, little sister program, you go get him. Jesus says to the church, the same ones that put him out, 
you go get them. Can I talk to us in here? I need you to hear me, Christian people. We have the answer for a dying world today, and it's not enough for us to stay within the confines of these four walls and preach and teach to the choir. We've got to get on the outside and tell young people, you don't have to smoke weed. You don't have to drink yourself to death. You don't have to snort cocaine. You don't have to jump in and out of the wrong bed. You can live a fruitful and productive life if you trust Jesus with your heart while you're young. Oh, yeah. Ecclesiastes tells us real plainly. Remember now, thy creator, in the days of thy, you start now. Glory to God. Uh, look at this. He tells the church, you go get them. And when they go and get them, Jesus says to him, go. Your faith has made you whole. Here it is. He got his sight. And he began to see things differently. Can I talk to us? You can tell when young people get their sight back because they stop hanging out with certain people. Oh, God. It, it doesn't mean you change. It doesn't mean you're acting funny. It only means you got your sight back. Because before you had your sight, you did what the crowd did. Before you had your sight, you slept with Lottie Dottie and everybody. But when you got your sight back, you realize I don't have to hang out with them to be somebody. I don't have to do what they do in order to be somebody. I am who I am by the grace of God, and I've got my sight back so I don't do what everybody else does. Uh, uh, yeah, when you get your sight back, you understand I might not be a baller, but I'm I'm the best that God has. I, I might not be a shot caller, but I'm God's anointed. I, I might not be the one everybody wants to be around and be popular, but I am God's anointed. When you have your sight back, you can speak some things into the atmosphere because you know who you are. Uh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I'm done right here. I'm done. Here it is. Here it is. The Bible says he's blind. <laughs> I hope you're ready for your kingdom shout. He's blind, which means he does not have his sight. Jesus gives him his sight. And then the text says he sees and he starts following Jesus. Now, 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 what messed me up was why didn't he keep moving the other direction? Because when you meet Jesus, <laughs> uh, you, you may have been going in a good direction, but when you meet Jesus, you realize he's the best option that's out there. Oh, God, help me talk. I told you the other week, there's nothing wrong with other religions if they lead you to Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They may be good. There's some good religions out there that teach you some wonderful things. But the truth of the matter is there is only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. And look at this. He didn't have his sight, but he had his ears, and he allowed his ears to give him what his sight could. Can I give you the kingdom shout? You need to learn how to shout over what you have left oh my god let me talk in here ah oh, somebody saying pastor but he was blind yes but he didn't he did have his ears you need to be able to shout over what you got left but pastor you don't understand they talking about cutting my hours back on the job that might be true but shout that you still got 20 hours a week yeah 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 you're not driving the 2021 toyota camry thank god for the 2018 honda civic you got shout over what you got left you you you, you got to make the un make the declaration that even when I walk in the house, if the light's not working today, then I'm going to shout because the gas is still on. I, the refrigerator may not be getting cold, but can you thank God that the stove is still working? When the washing machine go out, can you thank God the dryer is still getting hot? I just want to tell somebody, all of us got something left that we can give God praise for, even in the midst of losing some things. Thank God that you have what you have and life is not as bad as it could be because somebody would do anything to be in your shoes learn to shout over what you've got left ah uh, yeah 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 i'm talking to somebody in the cyber sanctuary shout over what you got left yeah yeah it ain't but a piece of a it ain't but a piece of a house or a piece of an apartment but shout over what you got left it could have been the other way somebody under the bridge would love to be in your situation so thank god that what you've got left and can i tell us something as i close the devil is really crazy because the Bible says he took out his sight. 
which means he can't see. But even the enemy know the word, but he apparently forgot Proverbs 18, 21, where the Bible says the power of life and death. Woo, God help me talk. It ain't in my eyes, y'all, but the power of life and death is in my mouth. So if the devil wanted him to stay blind, he should have took out his tongue because even if I'm blind, if I can open my mouth, I can speak sight into existence. Even if I don't have any money in my pocket, if I got my tongue, I could open my mouth and speak prosperity into my house. Even if I'm sick in my body, if I got my tongue, I can open my mouth and speak by his stripes. I'm already healed. I need somebody in the cyber sanctuary to type it there. I got my mouth. So no matter what the devil took from me, as long as I got my mouth, I'm going to decree and declare some things and it will be so because the power of life and death is not in what I drive, not in where I stay. It's in my mouth. Ooh, somebody shout, it's in my mouth, it's in my mouth, it's in my mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what are you saying? I'm saying this for, on behalf of every young person. Don't do them like that. Don't kick them out because they make a mistake. Don't tell them they can't come in because they got tattoos. I got about 13 of them. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell them they can't come in because they got ears. They, they, they got their ears pierced. I had two of them. Don't, don't, don't tell them that they come, can't come in because if God can take you and change your life, certainly he can change their life. Don't do them like that. Love them until they can love themselves. Grab them and tell them you're going to make it until they know on the inside that God is doing a greater work on the inside. Somebody type it in the comments. Don't do them like that. Yeah, don't do them like that. But God has called us to love them. He's called us to pray for them. He's called us to minister to them. And it becomes our responsibility not to gang up on them, but to love them until God can raise them up. I want to pray right now. I want to pray right now. I want to pray for your son, your daughter, my sons. I want to pray for the daughters. I want to pray for grandchildren. I want to pray for this lost world, this generation. Not, 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 not that, that they stay where they are, but that God will awaken something on the inside of us so that we can go and minister to them where they are. Come on right where you are. Come on right where you are. Father, I thank you for those in the cyber sanctuary. Father, I thank you for those young people, those that are connected, those that came out of our loins. God, we speak right now. Not another day where they live beneath their privilege, but open their eyes. God, let them know you died for them to live on top and not on the bottom. You died for them to have the best of life and not settle for the rest of life. God, we want to speak right now the blood of Jesus. Protect our young people. Protect their minds. God, forgive us for not sharing our real testimonies with them. Forgive us for thinking that we were holier than thou. Forgive us for not speaking life into our young people. God, help us to seize the moment to change a generation. Help us, God, to seize the moment, to see our young people saved. God, give us the spirit of being able to empathize with them so that we don't criticize them. We speak life over every young person that's connected to this house. We, we speak life over every young person that's connected to our brothers and sisters in the cyber sanctuary. We speak divine healing right now. God, men relationships. Speak to those hearts right now. Father, we thank you that our young people will be asking, what must I do to be saved? Give us wisdom on how to lead them back into your kingdom. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you the praise. It's in your son, Jesus, the Christ's name we pray. Let every glad heart say amen. Listen, I love you. I want you to know I love you and I'm praying for you. More importantly, don't do our young people like that. Join with me. And let's go reach this generation for Christ. We're not marketers. We are fishermen. God has given us the right bait to change this generation. I love you and I'm praying for you. The ways to give on the screen, that information to be there. Somebody will be back in just a moment to share with you. But I want you to know you're a fisherman. And it's our job to go and win the lost at any cost. I love you and I'm praying for you. And until next time, let's keep building the kingdom one person at a time let's build family can i say this I, 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 my prayer is that you were charged 
you were challenged and more importantly, you were inspired to change. That's right. Uh, the whole purpose of this lesson, this series uh, was to awaken something on the inside of us that we're not just marketers. Yes, we want to do everything we can in the natural uh, to receive and be prepared for the harvest. But remember, don't ever forget this. You're fishermen. That's what God called us. He called us fishermen. And I'm saying this because the Holy Spirit prompted this word uh, in my spirit, even in early February. And that was to get back to doing what you started out doing. And that was winning souls. It's not about church transfer. It's about winning souls to the kingdom of God. And so we got back to our grassroots and uh, I pray that you've been blessed, you've been encouraged and equipped to go out and evangelize your communities, your homes, uh, wherever you may be. It is important that we do our part to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. I love you. We're praying for you. And until next time, let's keep building the kingdom one person at a time. Let's build. Yeah.